Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. The time has finally come where Ubiquiti released the Unify Dream Router. I've been waiting for this to come to the general public for a few months now. The Dream Router lets you have Unify Network, Unify Protect, Talk, and Access, but there are some limitations to that and we will go through it in this video. I was able to order two Dream Routers, so in about two weeks I'm going to do a live stream and I'm going to give one away. So make sure you subscribe to this channel as well as my Twitter. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You'd find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, I do have new Ubiquity affiliate links and I'll put those in the description below. Now let's take a closer look at the Unified Dream Router and what comes inside the box. The Dream Router features a 0.96 inch LCM color screen for network and connection monitoring, and it will also tell us when we have firmware updates. On the back, we have our power input, a WAN port, two 802.3 AF PoE ports, and then two non-PoE ports, as well as a micro SD memory card expansion. On the bottom, we have a reset button, which will put this back to factory default state. And the only other thing that comes in the box is our power cord for the Dream Router. So that was a closer look at the Dream Router and I think it is a really nice router for home use and maybe small business. Now there are a couple other new features about the Dream Router compared to the base UDM. So this Dream Router supports Wi-Fi 6 so it has a built-in Wi-Fi 6 access point that is four streams. For our five gigahertz band, we have four by four multi-user MIMO with OFDMA, and we have a throughput rate of 2.4 gigabits per second. On the 2.4 gigahertz, we have four by four MIMO with a throughput rate of 600 megabits per second. The Dream Router also has a 128 gigabit internal storage, and it has that micro SD card for expansion. And I do have a micro SD card in mine, 128 gig, and that's the minimum that you need to put in it. The one I'm using is the SanDisk Extreme, but you can find other ones that will work well with the Protect footage if that's what you're going to be using it for. The Dream Router comes in at $199 USD MSRP, which I think is a great price. Now I know the question is going to come up, why would I buy a UDM base model when I could get a UDR? Well, I probably would just go with the UDR as it has more features and it's $100 less. The UDM base model is $299 USD, whereas the UDR is only $199 and it could host all of the network controllers. The UDM base model also only has Wi-Fi 5 and it has no PoE ports. They both have two gigabits of memory, but the one thing that does change is the processor. So on the UDR, we have a dual core Cortex-A53 at 1.35 gigahertz. On the UDM base model, we have an ARM Cortex-A57 quad core at 1.7 gigahertz. So now let's get the UDR up and running. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head over to the IP address of 192.168.1.1. I'm already plugged into the back of the UDR and we can see the initial startup is coming. It says UI is committed to protecting your privacy and security. We'll say set up UDR. Now it's connecting to the internet, but it won't connect because I have a static IP address. If you're just using DHCP, it should connect right away if you're plugged into the WAN port. If you're not using a DHCP address, you're going to have to go to the advanced internet options. You could also set up this console offline. So my connection type will be static. I'm going to enter my IP address, my gateway, my subnet mask, and then my DNS servers. And then I'm going to apply that and we should be online. Now, after adding my static IP information, we could see that I'm connected to the internet and I'll press next. We need to go through seven different steps to get the UDR set up. It's going to ask us for our console name. I'm going to call it Mac Telecom and then UDR. I'm going to agree to the service and then we'll press next. Now on this second step, you could either sign in with your single sign on or you could skip it and set up local credentials. I'm going to sign in with my single sign on. Step three is for an update schedule and I typically turn mine off, but if you're not going to be checking your console too often, you might want to leave it on. Now it's telling us to set up our Wi-Fi, and we can't proceed any further until we do. So it says Cody's Wi-Fi network, I'll keep it at that and I'll just put in a password of test1234 and press next. I'm not going to send my diagnostics and we'll press next. 
and now it's starting a speed test. Okay, and these are my results. So our download results were 927 down and up was 56. I paid for a gig down and 50 up, so that's pretty close. Now on step seven, it's setting up our console. It's just gonna ask us to review our information and then press finish. Now we have our UDR up and running and on this main page, we could see a few things. So we could see our topology and currently there's nothing connected to the UDR, so it's not showing any other devices. And then there's this floor plan tab. So if you want, you could upload your floor plan of your home or business, and then you could hover over your UDR. And this will show you a base heat map scan. Now we can see a few things with the UDR. The UDR version is 2.4.9, and I upgraded this last night when I was doing some testing. This is the first general release for the UDR, and it comes bundled with Unify Network 7.1.61, and Unify Protect 1.21.5. We can see both the network and Protect are up and running and they're up to date. If you wanna add a new user into this UDR to manage it or to view Protect, we would just go to the users and then we have a notifications tab. Let's take a look in the settings. So this is the main dashboards for our settings for our UDR. We could see our Unify OS version and then we can see that the UDR can only run two applications at once. So if we tried to install Access or Talk, it wouldn't work. So let's do that now. I'll click Install on Unify Access. And we could see that Unify Access has been stopped. So that's one limitation with the UDR. We could only have two applications going at once. I am only going to be using Protect with this, so that's fine. But if you want to run either Access or Talk, you're going to have to stop Unify Protect. Below that, we could change our Unify OS release channel, and we could have the automatic updates for Unify OS or for the applications. Under our system, we have Remote Access, which is enabled by default, and this will allow you to view your cameras with Unify Protect or your Unify network application app. We have cloud config backup, which if it's enabled, it will push a backup to account.ui.com under your single sign-on. So we could see that there's been no backups, but we could create a backup if we'd like. We could also download a config backup, which would download it to our local machine. We have time zone and location, and then we have a bunch of different console controls. So restart console turn off, factory reset. We could transfer the ownership. If you set this up at home, and you're giving it to another client, then you could transfer the ownership to them. We could download support files, analytics, and we could do SSH into the console. We have a bunch of different Unify OS notifications as well as network and protect. And then we have our storage section. So I have a 128 gig SD card put in here. And you can see that 63.3 megabytes have been used. We could also format the SD card. Now under about this console, we could see the name of the UDR, the model, the WAN IP, the Unify OS version, the Mac ID, the memory, and the SSD storage. We could also see who the owner is, the gateway IP, the status, the uptime, internal storage, and then the compliance. And under performance, it's showing us our memory usage which is at 64.5%, and we don't even have anything else running on this right now. We don't have any access points or any cameras. So we'll see where it goes when I do plug in a few cameras. So now let's go take a look at the network controller. This is the dashboard for the network controller, and it is a white background, and we can change that to a dark background if we'd like, and I will show you that. But right off the hop, we could see that we have my Mac Telecom UDR, and it's showing us the firmware version that it's running at. Below that, where you see my face, there is a WAN IP and a gateway IP. I'm blocking that for obvious reasons. We have our internet connection. We have the uptime, which is 100%, and then we have the latency, and we could run a speed test directly from the dashboard. We could see in real time our down utilization and our up utilization. In the middle, we have our traffic overview, and then we have client device types, Wi-Fi clients and most active clients, and there's none on this right now. We have our topology view, which just shows the UDR, and then we have our unified devices. With our unified devices, we have our UDR, so let's take a closer look at it. So under the overview, we could see our model, our MAC address, our IP address, and then the firmware version. We could also see the Wi-Fi experience for the built-in Wi-Fi access point of the UDR, which I just have my iPhone connected to this right now. Under general, it shows us our WAN IP, our LAN IP, uptime, memory usage, and then the load average. And under WAN, it's the same thing. 
We could take a look at air stats, AP groups, downlinks, network, channel usage, RF environment, and then statistics. Under ports, we could see a few things. So we have port one to port four, which are our LAN ports, and then we have port five. If we click on one of the ports, this is where we could switch the port profile. So we could have it disabled, or we could put it into a VLAN or a different network if we created them. We could also look at port insights. So this port insights will show us the activity and then we have a bunch of different display options if we want to turn them on or off. If you want to edit multiple ports at a time, you need to come to the port insights and then select the ports that you want to edit. From here, we could put them all into the same VLAN by clicking the port profile drop down menu and then selecting the network we want those to be on. We could also change the link speed if we'd like. Typically, you just leave this on auto negotiation. This dashboard is the exact same as any other Unify OS dashboard, but with the new version of Unify 7.1.61, it did add a couple features. First, let me show you how to bring it to a dark mode. So we would go to system and then we would change the theme to dark instead of light, and then we would press apply changes. So a few new settings that came with Unify 7.1.61 was this teleport VPN. So it's zero configuration remote access VPN. We would just need to generate a new link and then send that to the user that we want to VPN in. I'm going to be doing a full separate video on teleport. We also have our traffic management and then we have our traffic routes which is something new as well. And that will be in a future video. Now let's turn on IPS. So I'm going to detect and block, and we're going to set this to high to see how well the UDR performs. I was pretty well getting my full internet speed when we didn't have any of this on. We could take a look at the threat categories. And as you could tell that there's only 11 of 11 in the UDR. If we looked at the UDM SE or the UDM Pro, we have 35 different customizations that we could make. Before I turn on the IPS, let's do a speed test. With IPS turned off, we are getting 858 down and 54 up. Let's turn on IPS and see what we get. With IPS turned on, we are getting about 70 megabits per second less speed, which is still pretty good. Now, one other nice feature that came with Unify 7.1.61, which is the DHCP forget. So if we click on our client, we could scroll down to the bottom and then we could forget them, which will unlock that DHCP address. So if we click forget, we could press confirm and then that will give us that IP address back. Now I'm gonna get a couple cameras hooked up to the back of the UDR and then we'll go into protect. I now have two G4 dome cameras plugged into the back of the UDR and we could see that they're pending adoption. I'm gonna click on the cameras and then we're gonna adopt the devices and these will upgrade the firmware for us. I did notice one thing that was really cool, and they are taking this from Unified Design Center. So if we go back to our floor plan, we could see that both of the cameras were added. We could drag the camera to where we would want it on our house, and then we could see the coverage of the camera, which is really cool. Now, both of the G4 cameras have been adopted into our Protect Controller. We could see this message at the top, reach camera limit. You have reached the camera limit of your NVR. Adding additional cameras may degrade video quality and system performance. So really we could only have two cameras on this UDR. With the two cameras plugged in and adopted into our Protect controller and IPS turned to high, we could see that our memory utilization is over 80%. We could go to calculator.ui.com to see how much this UDR could handle. With the Dream Router, we have no access points added, but we could add up to 15, and then that brings our CPU load up to high. If we don't have any access points added, it looks like we could add up to four cameras, but I have two cameras on there right now, and it says that I've reached the camera limit. Now, since these are G4 cameras, we could have smart detections on. It's saying new smart detection feature. I'm gonna agree so that we are able to use it. And at the top of the dashboard, we could see a couple different clips. This is a motion clip, and then this one is the smart person detection. And we could see with the smart person detection that it outlines the person. This protect version is no different than on any other Unify console, so we're not gonna go any further into it. That's gonna be it for the Dream Router video. And would I recommend this? Well, I would to home users. I think it really has a lot to offer. We have all four controllers on here, but we could only use two. If you need more than two of the controllers running at once, then you're gonna have to upgrade to the UDM Pro or the UDM SE. I think for the value of $199, you could have a couple cameras on your house 
and you could also control your network and it has built-in Wi-Fi 6. Let me know what you think about the Dream Router in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.